Okay, so uh, my name is Andrea Barizani. Actually, well, my name is Andrea Barizani, but when I speak in English mode, I cannot even pronounce my name properly. So I'm Italian. He's Daniele Bianco. We work for a company called Inverse Path, and we're going to talk to you about injecting RDS TMC traffic information signals. So how to freak out most European navigation, satellite navigation system, in-car in navigation system, and uh, US and Canadian ones as well. So as you can see, we've got a bunch of equipment here. We're going to try and show you a small demo of the stuff. Um, we're not sure if it's going to work, because when you travel within the States and you bring this kind of equipment, you usually get one of these, which is a TSA notice of baggage inspection. And so they, you know, break, they broke some stuff. So hopefully it would work, but anyway, we'll try. So what's this thing about? So modern in-car satellite navigation system are capable of receiving traf dynamic traffic information, okay? And one of the systems which is used uh, within Europe and North America is called RDS-TMC. So basically what happened is I bought a car which had this system on, and of course my first thought was, hmm, this could be interesting. I could hack this thing, okay? So that was the first thing that came up in my mind, and then of course I drove the car and it was fun. And anyway, so we show how it's possible to easily I wouldn't say trivially, but I mean, it's very easy to hijack this kind of information and do some very cool things with, with this kind of protocol. So hardware hacking is fun, and of course, the, the concept of owning a car is priceless, so that's what motivated us. Uh, since we're playing with FM radio transmissions and RDS, which is the radio data system, it's very 80s, so it felt very, very cool. And the main problem is that this kind of information is implicitly trusted by drivers. Okay, and is you know sent in almost clear checks. So we found you know that's a problem. So let's try to make a presentation about it and get free tickets to you know all around the world for doing conferences. And it worked. And more important, chicks will melt when you show this, and we're going to prove that with a very effective video. Okay, so that that's the important thing to us. Really, it's not hacking. It's not. It's you know chicks. So. Radio data system, so RDS is used for transmitting data over FM transmission. It is the piece, the protocol that allows you to see the name of the radio station on your car display. Okay, so 100% of radio, FM radio nowadays uh, support that protocol. And, and it can also be used for other things like alternate frequencies. So you're driving, you're setting a radio station, and that, you know, you're passing through a different state or whatever, and then your radio automatically picks up the new frequency. So that's called alternate frequency. You get a program type, so you know what kind of program is being played. And on most radio, you can set, I want to hear country music or whatever. It's not very much used, but, you know, it's there. You can get the time, so it's a poor man's NTP, NTP service. And you can get a news override. So what happens is when, you know, when you're listening to your music CD, you can tell the radio, okay, just stop playing the CD and, you know, fall back on radio because I want to hear the news, okay? So what happens here is that RDS, so this is like the um, FM uh, spectrum. So we got a mono signal here at 19, at the 19 kilohertz subcarrier where a pilot tone. Here we got the stereo information. And here at 57K, at this subcarrier, we have the RDS signal, okay, which is basically bits going on, zero and one. And your, you know, radio is, um, is focusing on that subcarrier for getting the, the data, okay? So RDS TMC is a way for using RDS, for using that subcarrier to send, you know, information about, uh, traffic, basically. It was first introduced in 1997 in Germany. Of course, who else could have introduced that? Germany. And it was implemented around Europe in the following years. And it's kind of old protocol, but for instance, Italy got in in 2004, and Australia will get in th this year, okay? So even if it's very, very old technology and very 80s, I mean, this is actually very, very relevant. And it's a technology that's still being used, and it's been pushed right in the you know, last two or three years. Um, so what happens, we got, you know, stations, police, uh, whatever, getting traffic information, and then they send this information to a uh, radio station, okay? And this radio station, they broadcast this information in packets, in RDS packets. And then on your car, if your satellite navigation system supports that, then you're going to see the information, okay? So it's implemented in almost in-car satellite navigation system. If you buy a car, 
which already has a navigation system, you usually get TMC, TMC fun functionality. If you buy uh, external or portable RDS system, um, sorry, satellite navigation system, you can usually, if, the, if it's a low-end model, you can buy an external antenna so that you can, you can get the, the feature on high-end models it's, you know, built in. Uh, RDS TMC is available in both free and commercial services. Most of the services are free, so you don't have to pay anything for this. And we're going to see what we, what we mm, refer to when we talk about commercial services. Okay? It can also be transmitted not over, not only over RDS, so TMC can also be transmitted over digital radio. Okay? So some people do that. So this is our RDS TMC terminal. So this is my car. And here we get the event list. So we got a cute icon about the category of the event. We got the, the this is a road name, and then we got uh, how far it is from us, so 215 kilometers. And then if we click on one of the events, we had a map with the road and the event and a nice label for that, okay? So you can browse through all the message events, or the car is going to pop up events we're going to see when that happens. So the issue is that there's no form of, of authentication of the data. There's some sort of encryption which is supported, but it's only used for discrimination of messages. It's not really used for security. It's not real encryption. It's just something where we're going to talk about that, but it's only used for commercial services and is completely relevant to our goals. Okay? There's no session involved. There's no concept of sequence number or stuff. It's just you know plain text clear information. So we tested the feasibility of decoding, so understanding the protocol, and sending uh, false messages to our victim by using off-the-shelf components. We didn't want to spend thousands of dollars for doing this. We just want to show, you know, we can do this with, you know, 100 bucks of equipment, and it works, okay? And so you'll be the judge of our results. So this is the victim. So in most presentation about IT, you got the victim and you got like a box or a server I mean, here you got a freaking car. Isn't that cool? That's what motivated us the most, okay? And so the first thing we need to do is sniffing RDS for understanding what's going on, okay? So we need to get a raw FM signal, which is called the MPX, okay? And the way you can do that, you get a... F, you get an audio or video tuner, a PCI board for your computer that also acts as a tuner. You can buy that for $20 on eBay, okay? And most of them have, have an FM decoder module which allows you to, to, to pin in on the, on the board and get this raw signal because we don't want the audio component of the signal. We want the raw information before it's been processed by, you know, our soundboard and the speakers and stuff. And so here you can get a list of all kind of chipset you can get. And this one, so we use this one, so we bought a, a we looked for a car that has, that has this, this, that chipset. And so, uh, which was useful for our goals, okay. So once we have the signal, so we built, uh, we need a chipset that can demodulate the RDS signal, and that's one of the most common ones. Pretty much every radio that decodes RDS information has that kind of chipset. Okay, there's one or two chips that, that do that. And, and then we use a peak for server conversion, and then we decode the signal using our own software so that we can actually see what's going on. So think about Ethereal or Wireshark for RDS, okay? And so we use custom hardware for that. And there's another project going on that tries to do this, but it's very outdated. It doesn't concern TMC messages. It wants a specific set of, of equipment, so it's not... It's promising, but we decided to do our own thing because it was better. So this is a standard PCI board for audio and video uh, tuning, and there we can hijack, you know, the board and get the raw signal. So for sniffing, so this is our chipset. So do you want to talk? Because you're speaking as well, you know. You can't get away with it without speaking, or you're busy. Mm, okay. No, no, okay. No, no, okay. So go on. Uh, set up. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty simple. Uh, okay, as Andrea told, um, we got the MPX uh, signal from the from uh, from our tuner. Uh, our analog signal go to uh, the TDA seven three three zero B. That is a, 
basically it's uh, an, an RDS emulator chip. Uh, it's uh, from Philips. Uh, we use uh, use a microcontroller, programmed microcontroller, uh, just to prepare um the di the digital signal uh, from the from the demodulator just to prepare the digital signal for the serial port uh, from the pc serial port um okay so the main components uh, uh, are the demodulator the mm, programmed microcontroller and the the m mm, the mix uh, 232 that is uh, an inverter that um, have a, that has a function to invert the signal from TTL electronic uh, 0 to 5 volts to 0 to um, minus 12 sorry minus 12 volts to plus 12 volts so this is the board it's very tiny this costs like 20 dollars or something like that uh yeah okay yeah and if we can make it which we have basically no manual skills because we type on a keyboard all day. Anyone can make it. So, <laughs> so that's uh, what. That, yeah, that's the assembly. So yeah. as you can see, we build our own lab. For no, no, go back. <laughs> I wanted to show important features about this. Go back. Oh, okay. okay. So this is used for um, for printing the board. As you can see, our lab is so advanced that we have a bed nearby so that we can attend the process. Okay, so we, we we are nursing this board, and so that's how it works. Okay, it's a very so creative process. So that's another um, another diagram of the sniffing circuit. Uh, okay, that's. So if you want to do it by yourself, you got all the information yeah. you want. Pretty okay. simple. Uh, okay. Um, we, so we use uh, why we use the the microcontroller. Uh, we use the microcontroller because um, mm, for two reasons. The first is that uh, the first one is that is that we we want to mm, we want to timing correctly the signal from the for the serial port, and the second one is that uh, um, using the microcontroller we are able to discriminate uh, uh, the quality of the reception, and so it's very useful for our purposes. Um, because we are uh, we are able to uh, to understand if the tuner is uh, is well tuned or not. Uh, okay. This is uh, this is the um, the output uh, that we that we get uh, on the serial port. So we have the digital RDS stream zeros and one. So this is not a very good one because we can see there's not lots of zeros and ones. Okay. So this was just with a very crappy antenna. Okay. And then. When you when it works better, you get a proper stream of data. Okay, yeah. and it's binary, so it's cool. Okay, so that's forget assembly. We're just you know reading binary from air, so it's wonderful. So, so, so just to show you what we're talking about. So this is the RDS protocol. It's very very simple because it's made to be very space efficient because we don't have much bandwidth. Okay, so basically what we have we have um, it's composed of four blocks. So it's 104 bits, okay? So a block is made of two sections, 16 bits of data and 10 bits of a checkboard, which is like a checksum that's used by radio to actually uh, to validate if, you're, if the message was, was good or not, okay? Since we're talking about radio transmission, I mean, it's very easy for a zero to get a one and for a one to get a zero because of static noise, you know, weather conditions or whatever. So the checkboard is uh, an attempt to try to do a checksum control on that. It doesn't work very well, but it's, it's still something. So on the block one of every RDS uh, group, we got something called the PI code, which is a program identification code. Every radio station has their, their own code, okay, 16-bit code. And on the second block, we got a group code, and uh, which basically advertise what kind of data we're going to, to, to send to you, okay? So this is a TMC messages, or this is going to be clock information, or this is going to be news information. So we're going to classify how these uh, five bits are going to be used and how these subsequent group or blocks are going to be used. This has to do with the version that we're going to use. TP is, is traffic program. It's zero if, if there's no traffic problem going on at the moment. If one, if it, there, there's a traffic problem going on. The PTY code tells you what kind of music you're listening to. So there's a bunch of codes saying this is jazz music, country music, blues music, whatever. 
and then we've got a check word, okay? And then block three and four are used depending on what kind of packets we're going to transmit, okay? And this is TMC. So TMC, we got a PI code in block one, and then the check word. We got our group code, which in our case, it will be either 8A or 3A. So I'm going to show you that. We still have TP, PTUI, and stuff. And then the five bits are going to be used with this kind of bits, T, F, and DP. We're going to see what's, what, what their, what, what's their meaning. And then we got, you know, something called direction, uh, the extent, the event, and then the location code. Okay. So this is how it's going to be used. So, um, T, F, and D are used for multi-group messages. So in TMC, we can send a message within four blocks, or we can send a message within multiple, uh, multiple groups. Okay. So with those bits, we're going to advertise that. Okay. DP stands for duration and persistence. So I get an, a, an incident or a queue. We're going to know how long that queue is going to last. If it's just a 50 minutes event, if it's just a whole day event. So if we get a message which is about, you know, emergency telephone not working, that's probably going to be a whole day event. If we get an incident, that could be last one hour or two. So that's what's being used for. Okay. Diversion advice. So diversion advice. The satellite navigation system tells you that you want you really want to uh, take a different route because there's an accident, okay? So if the version advice is one, you're going to get a pop-up from your satellite navigation system telling you, look, okay, there's an accident, so I suggest you that you take a different route, okay? And then you can either plot a new course and the satellite navigation system is going to automatically plot a route if they are losing you know, the incident or the event, or you can just return and go on and then you're going to encounter the event, okay? So that's very important. We're going to see how it's going to be used, okay? So events that don't have a diversion, like emergency telephones not working or snow or bad weather, usually you don't get a, a diversion advice for that, okay? Then we got the direction. So remember, this, we want to be space efficient, okay? So in the location, we said, okay, we're going to have this event on this highway, okay? With the, the direction, we're going to stay on which on which uh, direction actually the event is, okay? It could affect both or it could, it could affect only one of the two. Then we got the, the event extension. So if we get an accident or a queue, we want to be able to know how far the queue is going. If we got a three kilometers queue or if we have a very localized queue, okay? Then we have the event code. So the event code actually, it's the piece of information that tells us what kind of event we're, you know, going to look for. So it's a code and your satellite navigation system has a table with all the codes and then, you know, a proper long description that, you know, translate that code to actually uh, a real usable information. So, and the event codes used for CMC are a subset of what is called the traffic management data dictionary, okay? And the location code tells you where the hell the event is, okay? So since we want to be space efficient, we're not sending actual GPS coordinates of the event. We're just sending a code which our satellite navigation knows about, and then it can map your code to GPS coordinates, okay? So what happens here is that every country has a different location table, okay? So that number is 16 bits, so we cannot have many locations. So this is very important. We cannot have a traffic information event everywhere, like at your house or amusement park, whatever. We can only have a traffic uh, message uh, event in locations that are um, present in your location table, okay? Otherwise, that's how it, it works, okay? And this location table, sometimes it's public, so you can go to a website and download it for your country. For instance, I think Germany and uh, Italy's location table are free. Or if you want, you can just, you know, most of the times you can get the DVD, the maps DVD, which is in your satellite navigation system, and you can, you know, uh, get it from there uh, by doing some small hacking. So it's not legal, but you can do that. So, so we wrote a, t we wrote a tool which is called uh, uh, SRDSD, which is Simple RDS Decoder. It's open source, it's online, you can get it and play if you want. You can build this stuff and you can play with it. So it performs nearly full RDS TMC decoding and also basic RDS information, okay? So you, you build a circuit, you, you point this tool to the raw data that you're getting and you decode whatever is going on, okay? 
And one thing that you, you could do, you can pass a location table, if you have it, to the tool, okay? So the format of the location table is a standard, well, pseudo standard, anyway. And so you can actually decode and mimic what your satellite navigation is doing. And this was the key for actually seeing if our injections were successful or not, and for actually understanding what was going on, okay? So the first thing you need to do when uh, um, um, looking through RDS stream is finding the PI code, because the PI code is going to be in the first block of every group, okay? So that's going to be the most recurrent string in your data. And if you find that, then you can lock on that and then decode all the string, okay? So the PI code is usually public. There, there's lots of websites with Excel uh, sheets and stuff, and you can, you can, you know, if you want to listen to that specific station, you go to, on, you Google for a Pi code and you can find it, okay? So then you can pass the Pi code to the tool. Or if you want, you can just search for the most recurring string. So in this case is 5218, and that's actually turned out to be the Pi code, okay? So five, the first digit is five, Italy, all Pi codes from Italy are five. So probably the state, United States, they have their own Pi code set and, and so on. So once you get that, you can, you can decode the stream, okay? And this file, the raw stream is just a series of zeros and one, and it is the output that you get from that kind of circuit, okay? So this is a, you know, standard RDS messages. It's a zero A group, so this is uh, tuning information, okay? And tuning information is also the one that's being used for, for telling you the name of the station. So if you see here, we got program, name, and we got two digits, okay? So in that case, it's RT, okay? And the tool is also going to cache all the information that was seen so far about tuning information, and this is the collected program station name, which is, this is a famous Italian broadcasting station, is RTL 102.5. So you can get maximum two digits in a packet. Okay, this is very useful for debugging because if you're listening tuning on a radio station and you know the name, then you can, you know, with a tool you can see if actually these packets make sense, if you're actually seeing the proper name of the station. If you're not, it means that something is wrong with the secret. Um, if you get, you know, garbled transmission, it means that either there's static, so you're not getting proper data, or something's going on, okay? And the, 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 the problem about this, since we're talking about zeros and one, and it's a very small, you know, data set, it's very easy to get, you know, incorrect bits, and then you can, you get something that makes sense, right? So you get some kind of event in some location code, and you're not able to figure out if it's wrong or not. You can compare the checker, of course, but, you know, that's not 100% assurance. So one of the easiest way for, you know, seeing that you're actually doing a, a good, you're taking a good dump of the traffic is actually checking the, the program name, okay? And it's a very warm feeling when you code all of this and you hit it up to the circuit and you see the radio station, you like, oh, it's cool. So it's like reinventing FM radio, but still, I mean, I was happy. So this is a TMC message, okay? So. It's a single group message, so we can see it over there, okay? It's, we have no diversion advice, zero, zero. So we have direction, it's one, so it's minus. So depending on your location table, it's one of the two direction. This is the event, which is low traffic, okay? With average speeds of something. So in case this was a multi-group message, so what happens in multi-group messages, you can send more information. So you can send this low traffic average speed of 50, kilometers, 50 miles per hour or whatever, okay? So this is a single group, actually. And then we've got the location code, which has been decoded because we pass a location table. So this is a big road in Rome, which is often jammed. So, you know, we're Italian, so we drive like Italian. So this happens all the time. So our country was very good for actually testing these kind of things because we get traffic messages all the time. It's just, you know, flooded by queues, 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 traffic, traffic. So, you know, that's why we did it. And then we map that to a GPS information because we have the location table and the location table maps codes to GPS information. So we get that and we also provide a Google map link so you can actually see if that makes sense. And then here you get the row data, okay? And this is a free A group. So eight A groups delivers the event and free A groups deliver uh, the TMC system information. They're used to advertising that that radio channel is actually sending you TMC message information, okay? And this is very important because what happens, your radio doesn't know automatically 
where it's going, sorry, your satellite navigation system doesn't know automatically where it's going to pick up TMC information. So you need some sort of ping, of packet that advertises you, you know, here, I have TMC, inf TMC information. And this is done with free A groups. So what we're having here, we specify the location table number. So look, on this channel, we're using that location table number. And we have international scope, so we can send, you know, uh, messages about different countries, which is a fairly common thing in Italy because, you know, in the north of Italy, we live in Europe, right? So we are surrounded by so many countries that this is very common, especially when you're near borders. And then we have national scope, regional scope, European scope, whatever. And then you got the application ID. So this number is allocated, reserved for TMC. So this free A group is not restricted to TFC information, is used by many, many applications. It's called an open format standard. And you can tell what kind of information it's delivering by checking the application ID code. Okay, so that's how they're going to use the space. And of course, we had the row data in both binary hexadecimal so that you can play with it, okay? So we also have a version that plots everything on Google Maps, okay, using their API. So this is important. You get a dump, you know, one hour of traffic messages. You plot it on, on, you know, on whatever, and you see if it makes sense. Okay. So here we got lots of events near Rome, which makes perfect sense. So and in Milan too. So if you actually zoom in here, I mean, it, it makes sense. So some video clip. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So video clip time. So so we thought as since it. This is the hangover session, right? Because you're probably, you know, sleeping a lot. So we got a cheesy video clip, a cheesy short movie for proving how effective our research is and the fact that we're not lame. Okay? So do you want to see the cheesy movie? Oh, yeah. oh that's it. Okay. Good. Let's see if this works. Okay, darling. Let's go home. Okay, sweetheart. I love my new toy. I know. You love it more than me. We have to the door. It's no one on the street. No, 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 no. I trust in my now. But I can see the house. No, no, no. Oh, fuck you. Shut up. Are we? Look how good he's a navigator now, huh? <sighs> Who the hell are you? Ha! I'm the evil hacker, and with my portable device, I injected RDS TMC messages onto your navigator. <laughs> so now you're in my power. No, no, you are no, useless. No, 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 yes. My navigator. My navigator. Yes. I'm the evil hacker, and I have all this knowledge because I follow consequences. Black Hat! Best conference in the world. Recycle movie. <laughs> yes, you're the real man. Can you feel my power? Yes. Love me. <laughs> so, as you can see, the whole point is getting laid. And that's what drives our research, okay? So we thought, yeah, so that was the point. <laughs> we also got quotes. So when we first released the presentation, so the register quote us. So there's an article with Barzani says the whole point is getting laid, which I thought it was like the best news article ever about IT security, right? <laughs> because it gets right to the point, okay? So disclaimer. You, your experience may differ, okay? So, we got sniffing of the packets, okay? So, do we want to demo that? Can we do that? Yeah. Okay, sure. So, let us show you 
how you can sniff packets with this. It's all yours. Take it away. How do you think that would work? Uh, <laughs> the DNS name? That's not I don't know. <laughs> oh, fuck. So what we're going to show you, so here we got Where is a receiver here. Keyboard. It's your box. Don't ask me. So <laughs> this is the, our FM transmitter, and this is actually the receiver, OK? And we're not using any antenna here, so we, we're just going to Oh, actually, yeah, we have an antenna here. So this is the PC. This is the PCI board, OK? So this is our FM antenna. So we're hijacking a pin here, which is going here through this circuit, OK? And then this, the output of this circuit is a serial port, which goes back to this computer, OK? So we have kind of a circle here. And then we get the information. And we should, we should get zeros and one about uh, decoded traffic, OK? And that's the first step. If we get it working. Okay. So um, let's us to prepare to prepare the packets that we want to inject. No, 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 no. First sniffing, then injection. Oh, okay. No Yes, sir. We should rehearse more, you know? Okay, okay so, so that's RDS stream, okay? It's very, very clean because what, what we're actually sniffing is the packets we're injecting, okay? So since it's like two centimeters away, it works, okay? Also, one of the things we're doing it locally is that because we don't really want to in send FN transmission to you know the entire conference and now that, that that would be very bad. Okay, so let's talk about the injection. Okay, yeah, uh, we can. No, 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 no. Show the slides. Oh. Sorry. What do you want? <laughs> Man, you should change your attitude. You know. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so for injecting. Uh, information. So we can sniff. Okay, so we saw that demo. It works. Yeah, okay. So we can inject information. So for doing that, we use a commercially available RDS encoder. We can build our own, but I mean, we got late, right? So we don't have time for that. And so we use actually a small chipset that you can buy for 30 bucks. So this is RDS encoder. Okay, it's very tiny. But it's reasonable to build your own. Okay, so we talk to, to this device using I. I to C, I square C, a protocol, which is a very, very simple protocol, okay? So when you buy these things, you get their own software for sending packets. But the thing is that they don't expect you to send TMC information messages. They only expect you to send uh, information about, you know, normal FM transmission. So what we did, since we can talk to the chipset and the data sheet about the, the chipset is available, we build our own software for talking to it and sending whatever packets we want. Also because in this way, we can send packets at a rate we want. It's not just one packet and that's it. We want to send more packets and cycle and loop for different groups and stuff. So we build our own software for that, and it, which is available here. We work only on this kind of chipset at the moment, but it, it's very easily adaptable to any kind of RDS encoder that uses the I2C protocol, which is a very, very common thing. Okay? So we set all the parameters, the PI code, the PTY, whatever we want, and then we set the other remaining blocks, we, our crafted TMC packet. So this is how it works. So right now it's very crude. So um, because you have to edit the source codes for sending whatever packets you want. But I mean, so you set a packet in hexadecimal, and here it's converted to binary. Just for showing you, we're dissecting this information. And you can see how this translates to the group code. This translates to B0. Then we got TP and so on. And so here we got the the extent. This is the event, which in, in our case, this case is queuing traffic. 
And here, the last packet, it's all dedicated to the location code. So dx 16 bits location code, in this case, is 1391, and then you can check against your location table what the code is about, okay? So this is how you craft a TMC packet. So if you can sniff the packets, remember, in the decoded output, you also get the row information. So you see what's going on, you decide, okay, I want to change the event, the event. I want to change the location, I want to change everything. So you rebuild your own string, you convert it to hexadecimal, you put it here, and then you can send it. It's, I mean, it takes some time, but I mean, it's no more than five minutes or 10 minutes of time with a calculator and stuff. So, and how it works, so the circuit, you go on now. So first of all, we use this kind of antenna for sending packets, okay? So if you ask, you know, silly questions, we're going to hook up this antenna to the transmitter and sterilize you, okay? So just be careful. So yeah, the injecting, the, our injecting setup is, uh, is also pretty simple. Uh, we use uh, the e square c protocol to, uh, via parallel port to, to speak with, uh, with our RDS encoder. Uh, so we are able to send the, the packets uh, um, in binary form to the EPROM and store, it, and store them to the EPROM of the RDS encoder. Uh, the RDS encoder output is connected to the, MP, uh, to the MPX input uh, um, of our FM transmitter. And finally, the FM transmitter is connected to the transmitter antenna. Uh, the only important the only important things about uh, uh, the only important thing about uh, uh, the transmitter uh, is that uh, I mean the, the transmitter is a normal FM transmitter, but uh, since we are transmitting a, da a data uh, stream, we have to to take care about the uh, stability of the transmitter. So we have absolutely to use uh, uh, an PLL tuning circuit. Uh, in our case, we have uh, we have used. Um, PLL based on the SAA1057 uh, PLL uh, digital tuning that is uh, an integrated circuit from Philips and other. So you need stability because you're sending data, so it, it really needs to be very stable. Okay, so this is a transmitter which freaked out TSA, so that was <laughs> the component that looked like a bomb, actually. And, and so at, at the secondary inspection, the TSA officer went to this device. There's a nice switch here, and he went, okay, let's try this. Boom! So apparently, TSA officers are allowed to make those jokes. <laughs> if you make those jokes, you get arrested. But they can do that. That's so unfair. <laughs> Very unfair. I will complain. So, okay, so transmitting FM, so we can tune to arbitrary frequencies with this kind of circuit. You can find lots of schematics on the internet for a fixed transmitter. This one, you, we can tune whatever you want. And we can cover long distances very easily. So this kind of antenna, if placed like 10 meters from the ground, you know, and you got clear sight, it can cover two miles very, very easily with just one watt of energy, okay? Yeah. Which is nothing. It's really nothing, okay? You can, you can very easily, you know, push push it to like 10 watts or even 100 watts. I mean, ham radio people do that all the time, okay? So it's very, very easy to, to, to uh, completely, to have a very, very long range and piece of people big time, okay? So transmitting, the antenna, sterilizer, <laughs> he was out and resistance is futile. And someone had to be inside the car, like, for testing this thing. So I was inside. So sorry, you cannot <laughs> have children anymore. Uh, yeah, that could be good, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I was protected by my Faraday cage. So video clip time. So let me show you how we can completely, so when we transmit, so you're listening to your a station, we obscure the signal immediately, okay? So that's when we know it's successful. Oh, I cannot listen to my soccer match anymore. Uh, of course, we try this on, on Saturdays and Sunday, okay? And the radio station we tried was the one that was transmitting soccer at the moment. And remember, we're in Italy. <laughs> so that was very, very, very brave, okay? But of course, we did not test it long ranges, didn't we? Because it's legal. So we totally didn't do that, right? We, we, we did not. <laughs>
in Giulia è nuovo, nuovi negozi, nuovi spazi. This is our signal. See? That's a character. So soccer match, no more. Silence. And then you move away from the frequency we're jacking, and then you can see normal stations. Okay? So that means it works. So the first thing we need to do is lock in your satellite navigation tuner on that frequency. So what happens? So you got your radio, it has a tuner. Your satellite navigation system has a different tuner for that, okay? So this is absolutely not related to the frequency we are listening to, actually, okay? So the satellite navigation cycles through all frequencies. It stays on a frequency for like 10, 15 seconds. In the pen. It depends on the manufacturer. It sniffs for free A packets. If it gets one, Okay, I'm gonna get TMC messages from that station. And then it goes on and goes on, goes on. Okay, is another one. Go on, go on. Okay, is another one. It caches so you can get four or five uh, stations that send TMC messages and then it's going to cycle through all of them like one minute there, one minute there, one minute there to get all the messages. So you're not getting messages exclusively from one station. The satellite navigation system combines all the messages from different broadcasters. That's very important to understand. So we want to do, we want to hijack, we, we have two ways of sending false information. We can either hijack an existing channel. So I know that in my country, the government-run radio station sends DMC information messages. And I know that here is, they are going to send that on this frequency, okay? So what I can do, I can find a frequency of a station that, you know, sends those messages. I can obscure the channel and then send 8A packets, which are the ones with the events. It's not necessary to send 3A packets if my timing is good enough, because your satellite navigation system already saw that radio station. It, it saw 3A packets on that, so I can just jump in, obscure your radio station, and send my 8A packets, and then you're going to get them, okay? You gotta be careful with timing, but it's very easy to do once you get practice, okay? And then the satellite locks on it, and you're good. Or of course, the downside of this is that I obscure, like, you know, soccer matches, which is not good. Or I can fake a FM broadcast on whatever frequency I want. I know that it's a frequency which only I studied and no one uses, okay? So I can just sit there, send free A messages plus 8A packets. So your satellite navigation system is going to cycle, oh, there's a new station, and then it's going to get messages from that as well, okay? So these are two ways for doing it. Okay, so for being stealthy, okay, so I said that we can obscure soccer matches and stuff, but what you can do, since most uh, broadcasting stations, you got two frequency, the main frequency, and then you got a secondary frequency, because usually you pick, you p you're picking the audio from like the, the closest antenna, but there's also one on a different frequency, okay? So what you can do, instead of completely obscuring the channel, you can remix in audio from the secondary frequency. So in your circuit, you got a one additional antenna with one additional tuner. You lock that tuner on the secondary frequency of the channel you are jacking, and you remix in that information when you're faking your message, right? Because you don't care about the audio component. We're, our goal is injecting RDS messages. We can do whatever we want with the audio component. Since you were not doing anything before, you were only hearing the carter tone, okay? But there's not, we can send audio there, okay? So no one is going to be able to tell that we're obscuring their channel, okay? So attack one. So what we can send. So we can send standard traffic messages and we can create cues. We can create bad weather, rain, smog, fog, fresh snow, rainstorm, Godzilla on the street, whatever. <laughs> Full car parks. I don't know. Let's go to the theme park. Oh no, we cannot. The, the parking is full. Overcrowded service areas. Oh my god. Which is, I mean, that's kind of useless message to me. If you gotta go, you gotta go, right? I mean, <laughs> accidents, roadworks, and so on. Okay? It's not particularly exciting, but it gets better, lots better, and we're going to show that. So let's inject, let's show you an injection here. Go on. Okay. 
So if you probably have a mobile phone that has a FM radio now, you might be able to tune on the frequency we're sending to and see a, a different, you know, program service name. Okay, so now we have to prepare to prepare our You should RBS improve your typing packets. skills, you know? Sorry? <laughs> you should improve your typing skills. <laughs> it's, it's not my box. Okay, so um, f the first time that we that we do is to set up the PI the PI code. In this case, uh, we use a PI code of uh, of an Italian broadcaster. But okay, no matter for for the demo. Um, the second thing that we do is to set up the PAs uh, um, the PS sorry buffer uh, that contains the program station name. In this case, we we use Black Hat. So you might want to use the real station name, right? If you're going to put we own you, and then you're going to see that on FM radio. That yeah. might raise suspicion, OK? It's not so stuff to use Black Hat. Um, OK, anyway. Um, and the important thing is to, um, to set up the, the, our packet. Uh, the important uh, uh, blocks are uh, this um, and this, in which we uh, we are setting up the um, the event code. In this case, the event code uh, is a boring uh, queue. Nothing special. Sei troppo vicino. Okay, perfect. Sorry. Um, in this case, we set, uh, we have set up uh, a queue as event code, and the last two blocks uh, are the. Um, are the uh, location code. In this case, uh, we, use, uh, um, we use a location code, an Italian location code, Milano Genova, that is a famous uh, road in Italy. It's a very crappy road. Yeah. So we have prepared our packet. And Stop it. Sorry. And now we have to uh, inject the packets via E square C via E square C uh, bus. We are sending the pa the packets uh, to the uh, EPROM of the of the RBS encoder. So here we're programming the EPROM. It's writing over the bus to the chipset. If I hear one more beep, what? I got a laser pointer. Fuck off. So this is <laughs> this is the output uh, on the serial port. We can grab it. Oh. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, it's enough, I think. And um, now with our. <laughs> You're dead. You're oh, dead. I'm You're sorry. so not going back home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let me let me do that. Okay, so uh, with the minus D, we load uh, the database location table. In this case, uh, the Italian. Italian database location table with the minus t we because uh, I, I mean we will we will want to see only the TMC messages. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The PI code. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. The PI code uh, we have used the one five one five two one eight. Um, black. Okay. You might wanna. It's your turn. Oh, fucking oh, keyboard. It's a ThinkPad. Okay. It's the best keyboard ever. This is. Okay. So that's one message. So we can see. Well, I cannot see. Sorry. <laughs> Queue in traffic. Okay. And this is actually the event table that we send. Okay. So it's working. We're actually sending a fake queue right now. Okay. And suppose there was a car in here. You know, with a satellite navigation on, they would see that message. Okay. 
and it's going, it's, it's been sent all over and over. So we're, we're repeating that message all over, which is actually how real TMC message transmission works. They're not sending a message once. They keep repeating it or they keep repeating the set of messages because since we get, you know, no static noise, bad connection or whatever, and they want the message to reach your car, they just send it over and over and over. Okay. So, so obviously there are some security concerns about being able to place a random accident on, on the road, right? Because you can follow it, okay? So, this is an example, queue in traffic, okay? So, and people, yeah, as I said, the problem is that people implicitly trust these kind of things, okay? My father would never, ever think that someone is going to do nasty things with these kind of messages. So he's going to just, oh, I see an accident, let's go, you know, there, and then there's a hitman waiting for you, which send, you know, fake messages for detouring you. So, so that's what we need can do. So we can also close arbitrary roads, bridges, tunnels, with a number of events. There are events for closing roads, so no for traffic accident. So what happens if there's no diversion, diversion the satellite navigation will pop up the event and ask for a detour. And usually when you see that the road is closed, you really tend to follow that advice. It's not like an accident, so. The problem is that some navigation system, so if the closed road is encountered doing recalculation of the, of the route, which happens all the time, because every time you go in a tunnel, you lose the GPS signal, then you get it. The, 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 some navigation system, they replot the route, okay? Or, you know, basically you, you, you miss a turn, and then the navigation system has to replot the route. So if that happens and you close the road, the satellite navigation will silently avoid the closed road. Even if you're telling your navigation system in the, in the menu setting, look, I want to be warned about TMC messages, and I want you to give me a pop-up, and then I can decide. Even if you specify that on the model we tested, it silently detours you. So what you can do, you can close all the roads around a main highway or whatever, and then you can get the people doing where we want and they don't have a choice. If they follow the satellite navigation system, it, if they follow the direction, and I'm not saying about, not speaking about following the pop-up, there's no pop-up here. It's just silently going to direct you on the road you want, okay? And this attack is also known as a keep your parents from reaching home, or keep your girlfriend out, or whatever. Just speak your best line, okay? So this is an example. This is a closed messages that we injected. We closed the road, and here we get a pop-up. Okay, so in this case, there was no recalculation involved. Or what happens, this is our normal route, and then for, su for some reason, it got recalculated, and as you can see, it avoids the traffic event, which is there. Okay? So, it works. Security messages. This is where it gets fun. I... You know, I didn't assume that you would believe that we can, that we're able to inject those messages by just showing cues and accidents and stuff. Come on. So the event table supports a number of security related messages. And we doubt that anyone ever used them so far. Okay. And they're very interesting because, so it's very relevant here. We're in the United States. So you got things like Homeland Security and TSA. So what do you think? So imagine this scenario. So you got like, politician or your president or whatever is going with, you know, escort, and for some reason, these guys have a satellite navigation system on their car, okay? It's not an unrealistic scenario, okay? And so your secret service agent, you know, watches at the screen, and he sees a pop-up, which is like, terrorist incident. <laughs> what do you think it will do? Oh my God, take cover, right? These people are trained to, to block everything in the first, you know, Suspicion. So this is what you can do. You can put terrorist incidents whenever you want. Why the hell did they plan these kind of codes in the standard? I don't know. But it gets better. It gets much better. Air raid. Danger. <laughs> we got an air raid coming, so let's warn our drivers on the highway. Please detour. And they're also so polite that in the standard, there's a code for air raid stopped. <laughs> so you can resume your course. There's no such thing for terrorist incident, though, because that's major. That never ends, OK? So you can do that. Air crash. 
And also, look at what you can do. This is an airport, and that's an air crash. I mean, that's believable, right? Bomb alert. This is one other message that CSA would love, right? Seeing bomb alert everywhere. Okay, and you can put more at once. Like you can you can mine all the highway. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So you can put bomb alerts and then air crash and then terrorist incident. Like you know, World War Three on your highway. <laughs> you know, most Italians we go, okay, we get all those. You know, but, yeah. <laughs> And we can pop up security messages if they affect the current route. So you can pop up, oh, security alert, stationary traffic, or whatever. And we got a demo for that. So let, let us show you how you do World War III on satellite navigation systems. I plot a route. Toll road, OK. I can pay. So you wait five seconds. Oh. Security alert, stationary traffic. This is the evil hacker. <laughs> so return. So what's going on? Let's go into check our traffic event list. Bomb alert, security alert, air raid danger, closed road, no for traffic. So something major happened. And my dad would totally believe that. So when I got in the IT security world, you know, I was going to my dad saying, you know, I can adjust kernel 2.6 system calls. Look, I can do that. And he always went, get a life. Then I showed this kind of picture to him, and he was, oh, you can do that? You're cool. Your job is cool. So we're not doing any software research anymore. We're just sticking with cars and, you know, hardware thing because it's so cool. So, and you get the chicks too. I mean, you, would you ever get a chick by hijacking system calls? I don't think so. Other funny messages, bullfight. <laughs> so when I first saw this, I like, I dream about this story. Like you got European community meeting, like people, all the different countries in EU discussing about what events we want to do. And I think it went this way, like Spanish people went, we got those, please bullfight. Because there's no other reason for that. <laughs> Delays due to parade. You can even get boxing match. So you can put a boxing match on a highway. <laughs> but think about it. In Italy, you get an accident, then you get a boxing match. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> you cannot have a pony. That's said. So having said that, implementation issues. So there are some kind, so you can do that. It's a standard. Satellite navigation system supports that. So you can play and do whatever you want. But there are also some implementation issues that makes this thing much easier. So the PI code is not at all associated to the frequency. So when we first tried this, we wanted to put the matching PI code for a specific frequency. If your PI code is like 666, it works. It's actually not being looked up at all. Some messages like total cancellation, so you, there's a, like a broadcast message where you can cancel all the different messages, it doesn't work. But what, mobile phones, but what you can do is you can delete all the single messages. So you can also do a denial of service thing. So I see a message with a sniffer, I cancel it, which just works by sending a message with a special event code on that same location. You cannot have two messages on the same location code. You can only have one. So you can cancel the previous messages, and then they're going to see nothing, OK? The broadcast message is not honored. So the, the standard allows a broadcast message that will pop up no matter what, OK? So what we wanted to do is send terrorist incident and having that popped up no matter what, but it doesn't work. The diversion bit is ignore most of the times. So you put diversion to zero. If it's an accident or a queue, some navigation system, they're going to pop up the message anyway, OK? So we expect our navigation system to have the same issues. Of course, we didn't have time to test more than two. But you know, it's, as usual, we don't think they support the protocol very, very well. Okay. So I mentioned to you that it is an encryption for RDS-CMC messages. But it's not really an encryption. It's just discrimination. 
So they built this standard because some vendors went, okay, so we want to sell these services. So you can understand by the very nature of this kind of broadcasting, you get a message over FM, you're going to see that. There's no way you can sell that unless you do something funky. So what they did, they encrypt the location code and only the location code with a specific location table which is not supported unless you pay. So you have to pay for DVD with that location table and then you can access the messages. And they do some kind of encryption on the location table 16-bit uh, code. And this almighty encryption is bitwise operations. So as you can understand, if you know any, you know, even small basics about cryptography, this is not encryption at all. At all. So you, you can just sit there, sniff the traffic, okay, I got this, 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 this. You can see on your terminal where the location is, you apply a function, and then you can decrypt and get a service key. But actually, you don't care, because for injection, you don't care about encryption. This is only for decoding real messages. If I want to inject, since I can sniff your messages and it's plain text and I can see your location code, it's encrypted, I don't care, I will send a terrorist incident with a location code and it's going to work, okay? So this is just for a poor man discrimination. It's not for encryption at all, okay? So it's not relevant at all. So, to wrap up things, can be trivially injected. Drivers don't tend to have any security awareness. I mean, if you're using a computer, now you know you can get viruses and stuff. If you're driving a car, would you ever think that you can get something like this on your satellite navigation system? I don't think so. It's not the end of the world. This is a very widely used protocol, but it's still up to the driver, except for that scenario I show. But we want this word to be a big warning for future systems. Please do some form of authentication if you're going to send wireless data to your car. Also because this open, opens, up, open, opens up all the possibilities of doing fuzzing and all kinds of things to your satellite navigation system. So this is a very, very small data set that you can play with, and it's all binary, and most of it is decoded by circuits, okay? So we tried sending fuzz, funky messages and to fuzzy, but we didn't get enough luck. What you can do is you can send lots and lots and lots of messages, and then your terminal gets very, very slow, okay? But if we're going to increasingly use this kind of system, it's an open door to, you know, a software that's running on your car. And on my car, the satellite navigation system also controls the radio, controls climate control, and all kinds of things, okay? So they should be very careful with that. Also, these technologies have a very long lifespan. I'm not going to change my car because someone found that I can inject TMC messages. I'm not going to do that. And also, I don't think they're going to patch my satellite navigation system because of that. I mean, it's hard to get people fixing my car for normal issues, not to mention security problems, okay? So, and this is a very relatively old technology. It uses RDS, which is very old, okay? And it's been phasing in this year in Australia, okay? So, they should be very careful with these kind of things. So, we got official response by the people developing this protocol. And it was very, very funny. So let's read the response together. So first of all, the article was, title was Hacking TMC Unsuccessfully. And I was, no, we did it, but okay. The first and overriding statement that should be made is that transmission of this type are directly analogous to pirate radio broadcasts and certainly will, in the case of Europe and the US, contravene each country's respective broadcasting legislation and laws. Oh, thank you. You're telling me that this is illegal. I'm sure it will stop everyone doing this. Oh, killing people is illegal. Problem solved. <laughs> so that was a very nice clarification. There is a chance that a false message could be decoded, but a degree of knowledge would have to be gained on parameter of the message being coded. Hello, I can decrypt your messages. I know everything about the standard. I can inject whatever I want. The random use of any location code will result in a randomly located event. We don't use random location code. We got a location table. We know exactly where to place the code. Also, random choices of event codes may not cause the terminal to react. We are not using random events. We are using specified codes. And then, I don't know. If the transmission is on a different frequency, it is very unlikely that the terminal will have tune to the false service. False. This is because this frequency will not be either in the main AF list or the secondary AF list broadcast in any of the tuning variants of the TMC data. FUD. 
This is the only way I can describe that. It doesn't make any sense. If the radio can do that, I can do that. It's as simple as that. There's no magic involved. There's no encryption involved. It's just a freaking antenna and FM transmission. I can do that. The last one is the most hilarious. Service providers and broadcasters, I am sure, have many protection mechanisms and processes in place to prevent any legitimate access to their service with their infrastructure. Faith manages. So you can read their full response here and our reply there. So you make up your own mind on that. So the future. GMC is also supported on digital radio. It's harder to inject because you need more software stuff and more hardware stuff, but same thing. It's still possible. It's not encrypted. It's not authenticated in any way it works. Another standard, TPEG, Transport Protocol Experts Group, is the new standard designed for replacing TMC. It supports encryption, but they don't say what kind of encryption you should use. Like the standard is, we can support encryption. This is the bits you can use, and that's it. And it's not mandatory, so it's basically the same thing. There's one new project which is called GST. It's a global system for telematics. It's a huge project backed up, backed up by BMW and all kinds of people. So what I want to accomplish is like BlackBerry for cars. You are in the car, you put your credit card in the car, and you access all kinds of services, including traffic messages. It is going to be encrypted with PKI and all that kind of stuff only because you have a credit card. Okay? So as they were saying in another talk, encryption is driven by commercial intent. But still, this is going to be much harder to hack but we're so looking forward to play with that. Similar system, Microsoft Direct Band, it's RDS on steroids. It uses another FM subcarrier. It has a larger bandwidth. There is encryption. It seems very well done. I exchanged a few emails with their team, and it's promising, but there's no chance this is going to be accepted as a standard because in Europe, they cannot get a license for that subcarrier, okay? So it's really not, I mean, it might work here, and it looks promising, but doesn't affect us. So this was the end of our talk. I hope you enjoyed that. And then we have, I think, five minutes for questions. Thank you.